Hey guys, welcome to Frank's Tech Help. So this is part two of my video on the Belkin Tune Base. I say it right this time, the Tune Base Clear Scan FM transmitter, which I'm using with my iPod Touch here. Now, in my first video review of this product, I kind of bagged on this item a little bit, but there are some good points as well. Like I said, I like the overall design of this item. The downfall is that even though my antenna, car antenna, is uh, less than four feet from this unit, I still get a lot of static. I know this doesn't happen for everyone, but it's happening for me. Um, also, the uh, auxiliary uh, jack on the bottom, which can be plugged into a tape cassette adapter, uh, pretty much sucked as well. Um, so as I demonstrated in my previous video, um, I'm, I haven't had luck with the FM part of this, and I haven't had luck getting any good quality. And I even pulled my iPod Touch out, plugged it into the cable to let you guys hear the quality, and it sounded really good as a direct connection. So in order to solve this problem, I've had to make a modification. Let me just jump into this here. You're gonna see the inside of this here in just a few minutes, but um, basically, I tried to figure out a way to get a direct audio connection from my headphone jack to go into my tape adapter. And if you can see right here, ooh, what's that? That's not on your unit, I know that. So uh, I'll get into the mod here in just a few minutes, but um. Basically, what this does, let me unplug it here. Ooh, looky there, what do we have? We have a headphone jack. So yes, that's what I've done. I've taken a 3.5 millimeter stereo elbow joint. I've taken this case apart, which you'll be seeing the insides of here in just a moment, and uh, drilled a hole into the plastic covering piece here, drilled a hole into the back, and uh, cut away part of the little support section there. And I also had to trim down the, the L connector that's on the inside of this unit. So now my tape adapter is plugged into the back right here. So what this does is effectively uh, cancels out the FM portion of being able to use this unit. But I don't care about that. All I want is good audio quality and I want my unit to charge and stay in the little dim mode while I'm traveling. So let's go and play. So, this is the audio quality in the first video when I had the cable plugged directly into the iPod. This is the same quality that I'm receiving now with my modification. So I have 100% audio quality coming into my system now, and I'm charging my iPod Touch. Although, like I said, you sacrifice the use of um, the FM transmitter. If I go to switch over to FM, like when you plug this in and the headphone jack gets plugged in, it automatically cancels this out. Okay, so might as well put a piece of black tape over that because you probably won't be using that if you decide to do this mod. So, which is probably what I'll do is just cover that up right there so it's not seen. But as you can see, my little low power scheme is still is still working fine and it's charging. So uh, out of uh, necessity comes a solution. You know, I, I wasn't happy with the audio quality and uh, that's what I do up in here. It's what I do up in this biatch. I modify stuff to my own preferences. So there you have it. Now uh, I'll cut over here and uh, in this part of this and go upstairs, take the unit up with me and do a breakdown to show you guys how I've modified this. Let's go. Um, I got a good deal on this since it was used, that's why I don't mind hacking it up a little bit for my modification. So, now when I first started trying to take this apart, it was extremely difficult to figure out how this thing was put together, where the lock points were. So there's a lock point under here, one over here, and two more down here, which you'll see here in just a second. When I started taking this apart, um, I worked my knife into the side here. And then I got lucky, I came up through this top side right here, and then I disconnected that first clip, and then I disconnected the second clip on that side. And then I followed around down through here, and this was really difficult trying to get this to release down here, so be careful with that. So anyway, work the knife into there and pop those two points loose. And when I remove this cover, 
you'll see that there's two locking mechanisms there and two on the top as well. This one has been cut away um, as part of my modification to make room for the headphone extension jack. So, there you have that. That was probably the most difficult part of the disassembly process. So instead of digging around trying to figure out where I could attach an FM antenna to run to get a better signal, I decided to go the direct route and come directly out of my headphone jack into my tape deck adapter. You could also run this into your uh, car stereo's auxiliary, you know, whatever you want to do with that. So um, <clears throat> I happen to have some of these laying around and just kind of dawned on me, you know, started thinking, oh, I wonder if I could, you know, put that up in there, have it come out the side. Well, it turns out it fit perfectly for the back, amazingly enough. Um, it was very difficult to drill and align this hole um, to match up with this, so I had, I drilled a little bit in either direction to give me a little bit of play so I could line it up more properly. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the rest of this so you can see because the clips are right through here and they have to be pushed in to be released. So, if you lose, use a little, you can hear them pop. Kind of sounds like it's breaking the unit, but it's not. Just releasing those points. Work my way around to the other side here. Okay, there we have it. Now this part is released. Took me forever to figure that one out as well. So, now I can push my little iPod dock connector through the headphone jack and release this. So, there's the overall top clip for this. Here's what the inside of it now looks like. Let's see for that. And you can move this little connector out of the way. And I'm going to pull my little adapter out. Now, I did have to shave this around the outer edge here to give it more depth to fit through the hole because this is really thick plastic. And I did the same thing on this upper end right here. And then this actually was from a previous modification on the Blue Mikey that I did. So I, that wasn't really necessary, although I did have to shave a little bit off of this back side. Now inside this unit, I took a small drill bit. <clears throat> First off, I did this side. So I took a small drill bit, measured out, tried to get my center point right here, drilled into that, came back with a bigger bit, drilled into that, came back with a larger bit and drilled into that to large, make the hole large enough without cracking the overall plastic. Yeah, into the back of the unit here, which you can see the hole right there, and I came in with a drill. <clears throat> um, I came in with the drill from the front side, it did a small one, and then I came in from the back side with the medium and then a large to create that hole. And I also, if you can see into the corner little area right here, I kind of, uh, there's part of a support structure that was in the way there, so I just drilled it out to give it a little bit of space there, so. After that, I came back in, and I had to shave down a little bit more on this little head piece here to make it fit in there just perfectly to fit into the back hole right there. I came back in, put this top section back on, put the unit back together like that. Now I have my jack sticking out, coming out the back right there. Line up. Also, before you put this back together, you want to go ahead and slide your top rail piece back on here and make sure that everything lines up properly, okay? So when you're going down and you're going to plug into that. Now this USB connector is held in partially by this, uh, these two brackets right here. So when you're testing that will probably slide down and out of the way there. So anyway, um, once you're done and you've verified everything, you want to slide these two top brackets in first so that those pins lock back into the proper position. Jiggle it around. There we go. It's locked in. Come back down to this bottom area and you want to lock that down right there. Make sure that those two pins get locked back in. And as a result of this pin right here, I'm going to have to shave it down. Uh, but you want to make sure it's shaved down enough to where this fits back flush to where it's supposed to be. So I have a little bit of shaving to do and it'll be done. So once it's put back together, your iPod should simply pop in like that and dock. So there you have it. I'm sure I've probably run over my time by now. Anyway, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please post a comment. If not, poke my home. And as usual, thanks for watching Frank's Tech Help. Yo, check it. God gave skills to a brother named Ish. Making